Please be for us nothing. Please be for us nothing. Please be for. Oh, they have. <laughs> wait a sec. Wait a second. This is a customized version of Force Nothing. They have units. Crossbow, Halberdier, Hussar. Is that a Hussar? Yeah, Hussar. Two-handed swordsman. Elite Magyar Hussar. Janitor at. Matt's like I'm. <laughs> Matt just deletes all of his units. It's actually, I think, because he wants pop space. He wants pop space for villagers. It's force nothing, guys. You've got to chop the trees. So, welcome. Um, you know, a big reason that my channel ever really caught on and um, got me to where I was today was because of the force nothing video, which came out in August of 2016. I just checked the other day because I was being interviewed by uh, um, a newspaper in France, which was interesting. Um... But anyways, uh, I, it was August of 2016. It now has 1.7 million views. For whatever reason, uh, that is the most popular video on my channel. And many people here found my channel because of Force Nothing. And it's been about eight months until uh, or since I've uploaded Force Nothing to the channel. So here we go. We have Portuguese for Emperor Matt in the yellow. And Emperor Matt told me that he has not played against humans online since the MSN Gaming Zone in the early 2000s. So what a way to play against humans online for the first time in, in so long. Uh, in the orange, we have Daisy Chain playing as the Goths. In the green, we have uh, Inflatulencer playing as the Sicilians. And Inflatulencer just had the same idea. Delete those units for population space. Um, in, the, in the purple, we have a Sensitive Boy. And... A sensitive boy said, I am very scared when I ended up selecting this th this boy to play. Okay. A sensitive boy is quite possibly anxious and nervous for playing oh, in front of so many people. Um, so salutes in chat for a sensitive boy who is not realized to delete the oh, units here for pop space. But easy to say when we're, when we're sitting back. Not so easy when you're in the game. Um, in the blue... We have Elbanovic, first community game ever for Elbanovic. And then in the teal, we have Mansion, who's actually making a house, who's playing as the Malay. In the gray, we have Tomatrix, who's also making a house. Thank you, Wobbles, for uh, playing as the Burmese. And then last but not least, we have Jump Rope Jeremy, who's playing as the Chinese here um, in the red. Okay, I just picked up on two terrifying things. First off, I wanted this to be King of the Hill. And unless there's some invisible tree-looking monument that I don't see, they do not have King of the Hill selected. Second thing that's terrifying is the fact it's on normal speed. We always play Force Nothing on fast speed. So not only do we not have King of the Hill, which can very frequently make games go on a lot faster, but we also have it on normal speed. Because why would you want fast speed on a map where all you do is chop trees? Why would you want to save time when you can just sit here a little bit longer? So, this is going to be great. Uh, Tomatrix is officially fired. I also feel especially bad be that the there are a few players... Oh, wait, no, they're deleting them now. Yeah, some players feel like they should probably use these yeah. units. And, uh, well, in reality, the units are kind of holding them back from having more villagers to chop right now. So... Uh, yeah, 24 hour stream incoming. I hope you guys are excited. And uh, I've been calling my Force Nothing videos podcasts for years because there's a better part of an hour where there's not a whole lot else to talk about. Um, and I get to interact with you guys and, and hear from you guys and talk to you guys about stuff. So I actually really enjoy it. So um, we'll get to that part in a moment. Now, I want to talk about civs before we get into this whole like Q&A podcast session because we're talking king snipes only at this point right there's no monument to go after so all of the civilizations here get onager which is really important so you can chop through the trees um there are there's one siege onager civ and that would be aztecs for a sensitive boy the portuguese could be fascinating because this is a map with no gold and no stone and if you can eventually sell enough wood to, to then buy enough stone uh, to have the golden stone to make a Fatoria, that building does give you resources. Sicilians possibly could could be interesting. I mean, I don't think it's too exciting. They did just go random sieve here. 
but um, if I had to pick any Civ out of all the Civs I'm seeing here, I might say Magyars or Aztecs personally, and maybe Portuguese. Um, I could see Malay being interesting if they can get the Force Levy tech, and their two ended swordsmen only cost food. Important to note that you can trade. So, uh, you know, sell wood to get gold, and then if, if you chop towards somebody, then you can trade and um, with trade you get gold income long term, and that's kind of how this is gonna go. But uh, they went random civ, so these guys did not. Uh, these guys did not select these civilizations. They did not go for tryhard picks. Uh, I guess in some ways you could say Chinese is strong because you start with a lot of ills. But uh, again, not something that they had any choice in. So um, I want to first talk to Wobbles. Wobbles says, "Haven't been around here in a while. Just got engaged, so life has been good." Hope all is well with UT90 and the AOE community. Hey, thank you for the 27. I just want to say congrats on that. Um, and it's good if things are going good. I miss you guys when I don't see you. Um, not, like, specifically at times, but I'll, I'll think, oh, I haven't seen this person in a while. But um, but I'm glad glad you're back, and thank you for the long-time support. Mind Wreck, thanks for 31. And we will see what is going to happen here. I think this is going to be your, your play. You get to a point where you chop through uh, enough trees, and then you have to build a farm. And you work with that one farm until you get enough food for a villager, and then you create a villager, and then you chop more trees, and then you make more farms. And I think, while you could try and get to feudal age as quickly as possible, and idle your TC and save food to go feudal, I think the play for me is to just, just get to a point where you're constantly creating bills. And you could actually, in Green's position, Delete the market. Or, pfft, there's no market here, clearly. Sorry. Uh, delete the mill. And then that, that way you have space. You can build the mill and then delete it and still make farms. But you do, new, do need to at least... Man, this map's so complicated. They can't even talk properly. Um, need to make that mill. So for the most part, they seem to have it down. Um, to me, it seems like Tomatrix has... He's been around. You know, he's been around for a couple years. Um... An experienced player and is chopping space for the next farm right now and maybe even the houses. Tariq is here. This is a live game right now. We might actually be a little bit behind live time. Oh, there we go. Caught up to live gameplay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, Burgundians here would be interesting. Uh, it's kind of a shame we don't see them. Now, we'll see how long this one ends up going. I could see it going on for a while. But also, if you know what you're doing on Force Nothing, you can get ahead of people really quickly. Which means you could just find people who have uh, Dark Age and Feudal Age economies with Castle Age and Imp economies and be able to kill them off. But yeah, so uh, this is kind of the this is kind of the deal. We just get to chill here. I know a lot of people, not trying to call you out, but a lot of people use my YouTube content to just chill and relax. Anyways, um, half of you guys might not even pay attention to the game. I'd like to think you do. But if you've been following my content for a while and you had questions about age or, or me or whatever, this is kind of the time to talk through things. Um, I have a tremendous ability to talk a lot. <laughs> so help me out here. Um, I would like to, to maybe interact with you guys a little bit. This is now the T94 is nothing podcast and that's about it. So <laughs> uh, why did he mill? Well, he needs to make farms. That's why. But you can delete the mill. A lot of people don't know that you can delete the mill after doing that. So that's probably the tidbit he's lacking. What is your heritage? Absolutely no clue. I have I have very little uh, knowledge on that. T90 official. How likely is it that we are all actors? You mean on the grand stage, like in total in life, are we all acting for someone else's benefit? Is that what you mean? Are we gonna get real philosophical here? Um, I'd like to think that people in my chat are not actors. I'd like to think that people who are here generally want to be here, but maybe my very wealthy cousin that I don't know, because I don't have any wealthy cousins, is paying you guys to be here to make me feel uh, good about myself. Yeah, Rock and Mozart, you cannot get upgrades in the middle and dark age. But you do still need to make a mill to farm. So the play would be, make a mill. And here you can see the vill counts, kind of. Make a mill, delete the mill for space. Like, to Matrix right now, he actually has 10 pop, but he only has 5 pop space, and that's the TC. So he's cutting, he has to decide between 
making houses, <laughs> which would be two of them, or making the next farm. I can't believe he did normal speed, and I can't believe he did King of the Hill, man. What would happen if everyone turned their microwaves on at the same time? Nothing? Uh, T90 official, what is your favorite dinosaur and why? Uh, probably... I don't know too much, too many dinosaurs. I was actually going to say Brontosaurus. <laughs> which I think is an herbivore. I'm going to roll with that one. I used to, growing up, I used to um, take toy dinosaurs into the little creek in my backyard. And uh, have a good time. I used to act like they were eating each other and whatnot. I feel really bad for the players who have not deleted the free units here. Because that actually holds you back as far as pop space goes. But at least red is Chinese. So. Uh, T90, are you playing in the Red Bull Wolo Qualifier? No, but I'll be casting it all weekend. So tomorrow, I'm going to be on around noon Eastern. Because the early rounds of the qualifier are pretty lopsided. And I'd prefer to get some things done and relax. And then Sunday, I'll be doing Sorry, every T90, single decider. So. Do you not follow the game? Just listen while paint Warhammer and listen to all the fun. Thank you, Desp, for the five dollars. Yes, I'm very well aware that people like to have me up in the background of something they're doing. Like if they're doing the dishes or doing homework or playing another video game or even playing Age of Empires. Um, I, I, I'm a good background content. I'm not good enough to be your number one focus, basically. <laughs> Uh, Destroyer of Fates, you cannot delete the trees with Palisades. You can do that with individual trees, but forest trees, uh, you cannot place Palisades over. We actually created a version of Forest Nothing in the past um, called Straggler Nothing, so you could Palisade over them. It was a real pain, but it did allow you to move through things a little faster. Um... Oh, these people are telling me that I'm their number one focus. It's a Brontosaurus, <laughs> not a Bruno, whatever you said. I said Brontosaurus. Is it not Bronto or is it Bronk? I'm sorry, I'm not a big dinosaur guy. I mean, I think they're freaking cool, but I don't remember. The Bronchosaurus says Timmy time. All right. All right, found the paleontologist. Uh, thank you, Pat, for the four, uh, 36. What the fuck? Three years. Bronxosaurus. Wait, so this person who corrected me on how to say this dinosaur's name didn't even have it right? It is Bronxosaurus with a T? How can you... The absolute audacity to claim I was wrong when you were wrong. That's not the internet for you. I don't know what is. Uh, bro, what, the, what is this map? We tried to do a free-for-all on Arabia and there's this really weird bug right now. Uh, I spoke to the devs about it, and I, I said, I don't think this bug will be fixed until spec chat is added to the game. So that's where we're at. Um, or it could be force nothing, one of those things. Should I quit school to full-time watch your stream? Uh, no, you should not. You should just watch my stream in school and act like you're paying attention in class. Your family won't look down on you as much, and you'll still be in school, so, you know... Copy someone's homework, you'll be fine. I'm kidding! Don't! I'm kidding! It's a joke! It's a joke. It's funny. One of my mods is actually a professor. So he always gets upset with me when I encourage students to be poor students because he encounters them on a regular basis. That said, I was a horrible student. So, um, for, for my own, <laughs> for a variety of different reasons. Can we talk about the fact that Emperor Matt hit us and I get to end the day with T Listen to this. They couldn't have been better. Much love. Emperor Matt hasn't played an online game with people since MSN Gaming Zone, which I think went down in 2007. And I don't know how long it was up exactly. It was up for uh, well the early days. And Emperor Matt is winning. 14 villagers right now. I heard it clears pop space. That's true. Maybe deleting your king for pop space could be the play. Uh, Tomatrix over here, I think, is saving up a little bit of food, though. But 200 food is still a long way away from the 500 required. And yeah, maybe the play is to idle for feudal age. Hmm. All right. 2005 is when the zone went down? Yeah, I actually never played on the zone. And I used to watch my older brother play, but I think he only played against bots. 
don't think he ever got into online play. There was a story, though, my brother told me, So, ba and maybe you guys can relate. Um, so he was in college from, like, 2000 to 2004 or something. I forget the exact dates. Actually, it might have been earlier than that. But anyways, they would play uh, land games in their college dorm. And so there'd be, like, I don't know, four of them. And so <laughs> they'd be in their separate rooms. And then he told me a story once where I guess Dan was better than everyone else. And Dan showed up with to his, the one guy's base with war elephants. And the other guy got really pissed and went into the hallway. He's like, Dan, come on, man. I'm still building up my base. Stop sending elephants into my economy. And they're just like yelling down the hall to each other about Age of Empires. It's just so, it just sounds su such a unique time, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, I never, I, I just watched my brother play and got into online games later on in life, so. Yeah, I'm as, okay, so the zone ended in 2005. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um... Henry says, I'm sure you've addressed it, but what about people who don't want spec jet? I mean, there have to be people who don't want thousands of random people seeing what they say in game. They might like privacy question mark. That's a weird one. Like, I've had a lot of, like, a lot of people try and speculate on why Microsoft didn't do spec chat. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I know, and it's not as deep as people think it is. Pretty sure the reason spec chat isn't a thing is pretty much because they didn't make the game to include that and they didn't prioritize it. Right? There's no like, I don't think there's this wide conspiracy of, oh, Microsoft is really worried about privacy, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't think that's really it. <laughs> I think that as someone who has complained behind the scenes many times, uh, and again, I can't, like, I'm in a weird spot, right? Because if, if they were to tell me anything, I cannot, like, reveal certain bits of information here or there, but I'm pretty sure they just didn't prioritize it. Um, like, in the case of the deathmatch ladder being removed, uh, which they'll eventually do in replacement of Empire Wars, why do you think they're not going to do Empire Wars and deathmatch ladder and RM? Probably because they don't have the infrastructure to do it. So they're choosing one or the other. So. All right. Looting Loser says, I just tried Capture Age for this game, and it looks like it works. Ooh, did we try it, chat? Yeah, but does it actually work with Diplo? It wouldn't show the proper info, right? I mean, we've got time to kill. Screw it. Let's try it. All right, see what it looks like. Watch my PC just melt. What question do I need to ask you that you want to answer? I'm, I'm actually surprised. People just seem to be chilling right now. And don't have a lot of uh, really thought-provoking questions. What the? Yeah, this won't work because I can't have chat up. So, yeah, this is, doesn't have all the name. Eh, not a fan. Not a fan. Thank you, Looney Loser, for looking into it. But uh, I don't think it's going to work for the stream. It's all right. This is fine. We don't have too much else to focus on. So, we've been working. We worked with what we've had for years. So, we'll be able to work with this just fine. Pro tonight says, how are you? Hmm. I'm doing pretty good, man. I, I've been really busy. Um, a lot of stuff like, going on personally. To Matrix is in feudal age! Okay. This is important because To Matrix wants to get the first price, the best price at the market. And so, um, in order to build a market, you need space for a market. So the only way for To Matrix to get space for the market is to delete the town center. What you could also do is make a lumber camp and then get the wood upgrade. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay, Tomatrix is really good at this. All right, Tomatrix now has the market. So let's see uh, what Tomatrix can pull off with this. Why are you getting horse collar? You know what horse collar does, right? It saves you wood. Is that a concern here? Do you really... Okay, whatever. Get your horse collar. Um, all right, so watch his resources at the top left. Sold all the wood. And now the best play here is actually to buy food. So you can go up to Castle Age and then get more. Um... He only has nine bills, though. Let's see. Oh, God. He doesn't have the gold now, which is kind of funny. Can he fit the blacksmith in there? And he's Burmese, actually, so they get the wood upgrades for free, which is kind of nice. Um, 
Anyways, as we wait for him to eventually build the blacksmith, okay. which is going to take a bit. I've just been really busy. Um, like I said, I'm going to be moving uh, over the next month or two again. Uh, and so I'm just looking forward to being settled and just kind of doing my my day to day. Um, you know, get some exercise in and stream and that's about it. And I haven't been able to really do my normal day to day. <laughs> Uh, and like get into a rhythm, which I'm sure you guys understand, you know, with with all your busy lives in a couple in a while. So uh, excited for that. The Matrix has got the right idea here, but the other thing to remember is Emperor has 24 vills. So while the market price won't be as good for Emperor, look at the space. So uh, this is the approach I would take, but obviously there is some benefit to selling the wood at the market first because the rates are better. I just don't know. I feel like having nine villagers, which is now the lowest in the game, handicaps you to a certain extent. Hmm. What is normal? Just just like a normal routine. I'm, I'm a creature of habit, and if you introduce um, a lot of different things into my weeks, then I uh, other things can struggle a little bit. So. Take it easy on yourself. Hope you're doing okay behind the scenes. I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm just, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be busy, so... I've been feeling pretty good. The last year and a half, two years have been awkward and rough for us all in different ways, right? So uh, we we all have had some struggles there, but I'm, I'm really thankful is that, you know, it could have always been a worse year and a half for two years for me. In many ways, it kind of helped me because I met some of you guys, so. All right. What are the market prices right now? I mean, let's just see. He's going to go up after selling some more wood, I take it. Seats matrix. Sell the wood. I don't know what else you really have to focus on right now. Uh, you get... <laughs> there are the prices at the bottom right. So you get... <laughs> you get 14 gold per 100 wood sold. So it's going to take a bit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you should be able to see the bill counts here. I know it's very small in the middle. <laughs> But, again, I don't think being to Castle Age fast is necessarily the best play here. And Emperor Matt's killing it right now with all these villagers. Tariq says, are people being a little rough towards MBL recently? You've asked this, like, three times. I really don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't know where that's coming from. So, I guess in my eyes, I haven't really heard of anything. But, kind of a weird question to see, to be honest. Ooh, and Mansion is just set to Matrix to Ally. Actually thought of thinking about that. Um, since to Matrix has a market, he can see what everyone else is up to. Which, if you've ever played Force Nothing, it actually is uh, kind of intimidating at times. Because you're like, oh shoot, they've chopped so many trees. I don't think anyone else will have a market because no one else is in Feudal. They're just kind of producing bills here or there. Force Nothing got... Um, a little easier with DE because you can actually shift Q and command them to go to the next tree. That said, I haven't played a whole bunch of it uh, on DE. So so this is a straight up regicide diplomacy Force Nothing game. The only regicide diplomacy game I ever played on Force Nothing was six hours. And it was horrible. And I'm a little terrified that this one might be long as well. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Deadly Cookie says, this morning I saw Fire play for us. Nothing. Really? Huh. He says, he seemed to experience the classic mix of fun and suffering that is characteristic of this map. It is, it's just chill. Um, there's also something about it strategically to, like, to chop through the trees faster than everyone else and, and figure it out. It's like a really weird puzzle, you know? Um, what's crazy to me is, is that there was that small group of people who only played Forest Nothing back when I made the video in 2016. Like, some of you might get on and play with your friends and you, you switch up the settings. There was a group of maybe 10 people who would only play Forest Nothing, and that's what I ended up finding when I uh, was able to make that video. Okay, so... To Matrix is going to get to Castle Age, and the main benefit here is just going to be getting the Castle Age wood upgrade for free. Um, and I guess could afford another town center, but it'll take a bit. But yellow is so much more space. Orange is so much more space. More farms, more houses. 
think to matrix feels like he might be in a good spot or he's realized how much he screwed up now I've, I've done this before and i've realized that having a low pop can be brutal but i guess if you can get the food eco to keep t get tc's running you could catch up plus you're chopping a little faster so yeah i think the best sieve for this map is probably celts um for a while there i actually had people trying to chop all the trees on the map and they were doing that with 256 tech. Uh, so you can research all text 256 times. I have quite a few videos on that. And in that, I think people were getting like 21 minutes. 21, 22 minutes, all the trees are being chopped, which is crazy. <laughs> the worst would be Mayans. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe because uh, the trees last a little bit longer. So. <laughs> Anyways, questions if you have them, chat. I know some of you might be trying to learn the game or just are new to my content, new to me. Um, I uh, Like I said, I was on a... It was really interesting to get questions from someone who wasn't too familiar with me the other day. It was a French newspaper who did an interview. I think they'll probably have something out in July. But um, kind of got me into that mental space of kind of explaining why I do things and what I've done, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Hi, I'm new to AB2. Like your content? Sweet. Thank you, Anthony. This isn't... Uh, maybe this is your cup of tea. I don't know. How do you feel about the current meta? Um, I think the, I mean, the meta and the balance is better than it's ever been. I do feel as though it's still a little lopsided in some ways. I think one thing that bothers me is uh, the open map, like open land map meta is a little too established right now. And almost to the point where it's a little boring. And I think that I think maybe towers need to be buffed in a little in, in a couple ways, which is crazy to say, but uh, that would be my main thought on that. Uh, if not AB2, what would be your day job? Oh, I have no clue, Ross. I have no clue. <laughs> so basically, um, I, you know, I uh, started playing Age when I a <laughs> stripper. Yeah, I'm sure. I started playing Age back in 2012, 2013, consistently. Um, and around that time, let's see. Yeah, around that time, I went to what we call here community college, uh, which is like a starter school or whatever. I don't know how you how you explain it to people who don't call it that. I had no like real direction or goals on what I wanted to do. Uh, also, I sucked in school and really struggled with testing, and so uh, yeah, I just I found it really tough to pay all that money to go to school and not have any like real excitement about the direction I was going. And so ended up now granted I would also spend like seven hours playing age when I was supposed to study. <laughs> so age of umpires hurt me in some ways too, but I just ended up uh kind of dropping out and it just starting to work. So when I ended up going full time in age, which was twenty eighteen, um I was a retail manager. But you know, it's uh it was a stressful job and you have to deal with people all day and the schedule was crazy and uh so i'm i'm really fortunate uh, and i feel very lucky to to be where i'm at right now so what do you think about aw4 um you know it's it's hard to to say what i think about aw4 right now as a game because when they said every time i've seen a video where they say it's gameplay footage it's not really gameplay footage um it's five minutes of edited footage and then 20 seconds of gameplay footage i think it's going to be a good game i don't from what i see necessarily see it catching on competitively but again i don't know too too much about it i think it's going to be good for age two because people who find age four will realize age two is back uh and thriving and i think that it'll be fun mix up of content for me but we'll have to see like it kind of depends on a lot of factors. I don't know if there's enough information out there for me to form a strong opinion right now. I, I think also a lot of H2 people, uh, like we are, we are currently watching a game that is 21 years old, um, and so we are very picky, <laughs> and we are very set in our ways. So I think that it's also not going to be easy for some people to just like welcome it with open arms, so which is understandable. What's more painful, sitting through ring nothing or dealing with retail Karens? <laughs> oh, God, dude. Yeah, I work. I mean, someone said it was good life experience. I definitely, 
I definitely had good life experience. Uh, I worked at a call center uh, at, for a company called Comcast, which no one likes. And it was the billing department. So people basically complaining about how much money were, they were being charged and their bills. <laughs> I worked there and I were, I was a retail manager. So I, dude, I, <laughs> I have seen and heard it I all. Woo! So, hey, what's up, Massive Kent? Massive can't. Massive can't. You always try and get me with that name. Thank you for the prime. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I told this story before. But I'll tell the story now. This is one of my favorite stories. So, um, again, like, working at this call center kind of drained the life out of me. Um, it's... It was hard for me to be positive all the time because the people... People saw me as the enemy. While the... The company was the enemy to them, but they took it out on me, right? It's a shame that we as humans, not not we as humans, but some people don't see the difference there. If someone's working a job, that's their job, right? So I would get a lot of crap. Um, and so it was, it was, I remember it was in the middle of winter. And um, it was uh, the evening one day, on my, my last day off, around 8 p.m. And... The forecast was calling for about a foot of snow. And so, <laughs> around 10 p.m. it started to snow. I was supposed to be at work at 7.30 in the morning the next day. And I very irresponsibly said, Okay, they're gonna cancel work. Let's stay up till 4 a.m. playing next. Call of Duty. Game. Forest. Nothing. So, I stayed up till 4 a.m. playing Call of Duty, just assuming that work was gonna be canceled. Ripped myself out of bed at 6.30 and I called and they're like, nope, we're still open because there's going to be a lot of people watching TV and using the internet and they're going to want to talk to us. And I was like, great. So, <laughs> I get in my car. There's no other cars on the freaking road. I'm just like, just cursing and so freaking pissed. I'm tired. I didn't have coffee. And so I'm driving through like a foot of snow, it felt like, and I finally get to work. And I'm just ready. I worked 10-hour shifts, by the way. So I'm just ready to hate my life and hate my day. And so I sit down. And so I don't know if you guys have ever worked at a call center before. But basically, the calls come in like uh, they just come flooding in, right? So if you, um, if you press opt-in, if there's a call in the queue, you hear a boop. And then the person's there. And it's just nonstop like that. So I sit down. I press the button and I'm, my fingers are crossed that there's not going to be any calls. And of course, immediate call. So I'm like, I ain't give a call on Comcast. My name is Tristan. How can I help you? Hate my life, right? And I hear this old man on the other end. Chicken? And I'm, again, I'm like real grumpy. So I'm like, Two to go. like, no, my name is Tristan. How can I help you? This old man goes, oh, your name is Chicken? Well, I'll be, chicken. I've lived 75 years on this earth, and I've never spoken to a man named after a farm animal. <laughs> I went from the most miserable, frustrated, upset person to throwing my, putting my mic on mute, throwing my headset off, and almost falling out of my chair. I had people in the other cubicles looking at me. I had my supervisor, like, trying to listen to the call. I, oh my, <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. And so I finally gathered, gathered my emotions and I spoke to the guy and I'm like, you know, I, I worked at a billing call center. So people just called to complain about their bill. Finally got it together and I'm like, well, sir, what can I help you with? And he goes, uh, he, he basically asked me if the local center where you could pick up remotes and whatnot was going to be open that day because he didn't have internet. He said, I don't have internet, so I can't look up if these places are open during the snowstorm. And so I gave him that information and then we parted ways. And uh, as to Matrix, I think intentionally rang the bell there to get Wheelbarrow. And that's the story, man. And I'd like to imagine that that... Like, that's someone's grandpa, right? I like to imagine, like, every every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every holiday, that he would tell the chicken story. <laughs> you know? And his family just groans. Like, you did, Grandpa, you did not talk to a man named after, named Chicken. He's like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I called him about the call center, and his name was Chicken. I had him repeat it three times. Oh, my God. It was, it was so funny.
Um, so yeah, there were some there were some good times, good memories, I suppose, from those days. But you know, like I, I don't want to get too feelsy with you guys here, but um, I, I I had some awful awful and rough times, and I didn't really feel like I had a direction. I didn't really have a passion, and I on a it, it, slash I'm really thankful to be where I'm at right now. So accidentally pepper sprayed the office and got the it closed for a bit. Good times. <laughs> Nuka Crypt, that's hilarious. So yeah, I'm just so grateful. Like I was addicted to Age of Empires, and nobody else liked it. And now there's so many people watching and interested in it now. So I'm, I mean, it's an old game, so this was never yeah. supposed to happen. Um, I spoke to a buddy of mine recently, and uh, I hadn't talked to him in like a year or two. And he was, he was saying like how proud of me and whatnot. And he was just like, so I grew up in a town that had 700 people, um, and like, I want to say half the town lived in uh like rvs and like campers and whatnot so i grew up in a very very tiny country town in the middle of nowhere and so he was like this was like not in the cards like this was never supposed to be a thing for you and i was just like yeah you're definitely right so central pa yeah yep central pa grew up in hicktown man spent my time in the creek and in the woods <laughs> I also had a grad. Not only did I live in a town that had 700 people, but I went to a school uh, that, from kindergarten to 12th grade, had 330 people. And my graduating class in high school was uh, had a graduating class of 32 people. So it was very like small, small town like upbringing. So you just moved to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Interesting. Yeah, I was. I was like. 30 minutes outside of Harrisburg growing up. And then I moved to Florida two years ago because I hated the snow. So that's kind of the story. <laughs> and you lived like Harry Potter. Guys, my bedroom growing up, my parents hate it when I tell this story because they feel like they, they feel bad. But it's a reality. My bedroom until I was 13 was in a walk-in closet of my brother's. So my brother had a room. And he had a walk-in closet. And then I was conceived and my parents were like, whoops, this wasn't supposed to happen. Where do we put him? So they just emptied out the clothes and they said, put him in there. Yeah, that's right. I was in a walk-in closet. You open my door, you take two steps, you're at my bed. You turn around, you take two steps and you're out. I couldn't even have a dresser in my room. <laughs> the dresser was in someone else's room. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. <laughs> what are the populations looking like right now? Just so we keep track of where, what's happening here. Um, fifty-three villagers for uh, emperor, fifty-four for inflatulencer. We have three people in Castle H, and that would be Daisy Chain, who's at forty-one villages. You can't see that at the bottom, unfortunately. Uh, oh, we got another one, Sensitive Boy, who's there at thirty-four. Mansion, who's currently there at uh, 38. Are you actually a wizard? I, I don't know. I might be. Like, I must be casting some type of spell on you right now to, to for you to be here. We have more viewers right now on this stream, and this is what makes me feel so bad about my content sometimes. We have more viewers watching right now than we did at any other point during the stream today. I was making jokes. We had great diplomacy. We had, I mean, I did my best work, and here I am telling stories about me sleeping in a closet and, uh, you know, having a small graduating class, and we have more people here, so. Yeah, so, Australia's waking up. What a way to wake up. <laughs> what a way to wake up. Thank you, uh, Batman, for the three months. So, I actually, type a one in Twitch chat if you have never seen the original Force Nothing video, the OG. It's really not that great. But I'm just curious if you have, haven't have seen it. Um, okay, so a lot of you haven't seen it. So, um, basically, it was a 4v4 Force Nothing game. And it was around 10 or 11 p.m. for me at the time. Uh, again, I had, like, work the next day. And I had 40 or 50 people watching the stream. This was in 2016. And 40 or 50 people was a lot for me. And so... 
I was debating on going to bed or doing one more, and I saw the title Force Nothing, and I was like, what is this? And I joined. Every person in my Twitch chat was complaining about it. Just think about it. The community's small. Anyone who follows Age of Empires is... They're not there for that. So if you go back and see the, the Twitch chat, everyone was complaining about how dumb it was, right? Twitch Prime, I think it was. Now the video has 1.7 million views. And there's like, there's comments with like four or 500 upvotes on that video of people calling out uh, the people complaining in the video in Twitch chat. Like Schmall again is a buddy of mine. Uh, he's not really active around the community anymore, but he was one of the OG viewers. He was complaining a lot and people in YouTube were giving him crap for it. <laughs> Which is actually so funny. Um, but yeah, so what was crazy about that Force Nothing video is that I started at around 40 or 50 viewers and then I started to get follows like crazy while I was casting that. Like, I don't know, I didn't know where they were coming from. So if you rewatch that, I had follow alerts and the alert just kept pouring in and then our viewership got to 100 viewers that night. So it just must put people in a trance where they can't look away or what? It's crazy. Thank you, Song Song, for the host, man. I hope your games were good. Um, but yeah, Force Nothing kind of started my channel's growth. I, I mean, big growth. Um, and then there were other videos, too, that, that a lot of people came in with. Um, Fat Slob went a long way, I think, to getting people uh, into Age of Empires. The most annoying strategy series went a long way as well. Um, I mean, it's different for everybody, but... I think the reason people found videos that weren't Force Nothing, though, is because Force Nothing got caught up in the algorithm. And got my channel kind of rolling. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it would have ever happened. So, I joined the game after Fat Slob wins. Yeah, Fat Slob. Longest game ever did it? No, not for you, Minnesota Twins fanatic. The longest game ever was was after you started following, right? Isn't Dave convinced the DE wouldn't have happened without your Force Nothing video? That's that's what Dave said, and I mean, it's hard to say. Um, but basically, DE would have never happened if the community wouldn't have had a big resurgence. So, you know, I think there's multiple reasons the community had a big resurgence. Uh, but if I'm on that list, Force Nothing is the main reason that I ever blew up. So, so yeah. Um, Force Nothing was a big deal. Starting watching your YouTube content when I found the most annoying strategy series. Yeah, it's a nice series. I wish I could do it more frequently, but it's... Uh, what Uniqueness, while it is good, it is easy to find in Age of Empires, I also am a bit particular. Like, I don't want to water down the series, right? So if I were to just upload most annoying strategies for the sake of it, then it would make it less special. Bill counts are actually pretty even overall. To Matrix's strategy... I, I kind of brought him level to where other people are anyways, to be honest. He's at 62 villagers, and Emperor Matt's at 64. And again... Oh, Emperor Matt! He bought a bunch of stone. What's the price of stone right now? Um, 239 gold for 100 stone. So he bought enough stone for a castle and a Fatoria. And so I think... Why is he getting fletching? <laughs> That's not town watch. That doesn't... Okay, whatever. Um, anyways, forgetting the fact he just got fletching. <laughs> uh, he might be trying to go fast Imperial here. And the resources are looking pretty close. So. Uh, Guardian of Kings, I won't be casting any more of that. Basically, uh, some things happen behind the scenes. And I have to be a little particular. Like, let, let's say, um, for example, Wame or Wham, who's in chat, did me wrong, right? Did this awful thing, and I felt very strongly against it. While it would be correct for me to, uh, like, if I was, you know, convinced that he did me wrong or things went south, well, it'd be correct for me to say that that happened. I also have to remember that I have a lot of people watching me. So, with the exception of spec chat and complaining about devs, if there's negative things or things that happened, even if I'm right. I, um, I usually just keep my mouth shut about it and move on, right? So, that's kind of why we're, where we're at with that. <laughs> Slander. <laughs> Drama. <laughs> Can you give me some words 
of motivation so I finally can click the rank button for the first time. Um, this is a good one. So, Birdie, here's the deal. A lot of people get stressed out about ranked um, because it's you get thrown in there against a player beyond your control uh, because they're kind of scared to know what their elo might be. I think the... Essentially, like, the best way you should view ranked, especially with DE, because the 1v1 matchmaking is really good, is it's actually the best way to get an even matchup uh, long-term. Way better than going to Lobby Browser, where you just have to hope that when they host it as a noobs game, they're actual noobs, right? Um, and if the ranked system is working properly, you're actually going to be looking at something like 50... 55% win rate. You have to go into it also expecting there's going to be some losses. Right? Um, the only exception there is I think like people who are above 1,900 2K might have a win rate of like 55, 60, 65%. So you just have to go into it accepting like you're going to try your best. Ranked is going to match you up against people who are pretty close. You're going to lose some games and, you know, just uh, a loss is a loss. A loss is a game and, it, it, you know, it could just be that. I'm usually drunk when I play, so I don't play ranked as often as I want. <laughs> Free loading. It has been a hot minute, man. What's up? Guys, listen, if you have ranked anxiety, uh, honestly, the best way to get past ranked anxiety is just kind of force yourself through it a little bit. But, like, if it gives you levels of anxiety where it's not fun, then don't do it. I forget the name of the comedian, but there was this guy who, um... Actually, I remember his name because he was on a YouTube channel, which I should shout out. And the YouTube channel is called, um, Dead Kevin. Which is criminally underrated and they don't make content anymore. Just, like, silly little videos. But anywho, um... What's up, Mike? Um... So, one of the guys on that, on that team, uh, was named, like, Ahmed Barucha or something. And he had a stand-up thing. And he's like, I don't like cats. And he goes, and it feels like everyone's reaction to me not liking cats is to give you the cat. Like, that doesn't make any sense. If someone's claustrophobic, I don't shove them in a closet. <laughs> Which is really funny. So I guess, uh, when it comes to ranked games, if you get a lot of anxiety with ranked games, uh, my experience has been to just do it, and uh, it ends up being more normal, but... Maybe you shouldn't even put pressure on yourself to feel like you have to play ranked games. You know, I, 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 I don't know. That probably didn't help at all. But you can't use any words that actually appear in the text slash text slash description. Ooh. If you want to spice it up, gift one sub. That Bisharno gifting subs per my mistake sounds like a great way for people to receive subs and a great way for me to lose a lot of subs. Or, 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 like, to lose a lot of money. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion there. So, someone in chat just said, Resident Sleeper. Games at 1 hour and 20 minutes and no one's an imp yet. You're wrong! In fact, at 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 48 seconds, I looked at the time. Yellow made its imp. So get your facts right if you're going to complain on this channel. Thank you. Uh, so, yellow now an imp. And I imagine the game plan is maybe to... Like, if you want to jerk cut, the game changes. So... I think he's going to sell the wood. Actually, is the market gone? Oh, I, I'm... <laughs> How did I not see that? Oh my god, okay, so the market's there. Sell all the wood. That should take you close to 500 gold. And then save food, which would be 800 food. And then uh, 800 food, 500 gold gives you... Onager tech. With Onager, you cut the trees. You then cut towards uh, an ally of your choice. And then you can trade with them. So you have to make sure you have, uh, you know, you're a nice guy. So they don't hate you. Now, with Portuguese, you could make a Feitoria, which costs 250 gold and 250 stone. That's actually really expensive to get to. I still think making one would be worth it. Maybe more, but space is an issue with the Feitoria. Teal's got a massive economy, though. 107 villagers. Like, I figure you make... You get to a Fatoria, um, and that will bring you the gold to make more trade cards. 
And then uh, stone is nice too, but you, you don't want to go all in on Victoria. I think eventually trade is going to end up being better. It obviously takes time here, but it is cool what they build up to. With 15k wood, you could get enough for imp, onager, and three onagers. Get your facts. I wasn't speaking specifics. All right. I didn't give. I, I just, you know, speaking generals here. Yeah, yellow just got guild, so yellow's going to be my focus. I think that wood's going to be sold. Um, and then, you know, the food's going to be there, like we've been saying. To Matrix adding more TCs to clear up more space, which is fine. Uh, quick glimpse. No one else is on the way to Imp. But I imagine it's got to be close for some of these guys. They've got a lot of food income. Yeah, like, Mansion could do it. Mansion could definitely get there. Uh, blue... First community game ever. Has done all right, considering the slower start. Here in the purple... Um, a sensitive boy was very stressed and scared. How did a sensitive boy get that much gold, though? That's insane. Yeah, that's really good. And after the university, would uh, be able to go in. I would say go Siege Workshop, because you're probably going to want the Siege anyways. Oh! <gasps> did someone just drop? What was that? Did you see that? I didn't press any buttons. It looked like it said it was saving. Maybe someone clicked... Say like the save button or something and and made a save file in case someone drops It's really weird that I would see that as a spectator Yeah, it's it's saving complete my guess is someone must have clicked a uh, hotkey for saving the game or something. Wolf nothing yeah wolf nothing was a good time. I actually there are different nothing maps that are possible um, You know my my scripting friends basically had spent like three years straight making different nothing maps for the community, so they might have been burned out by it, but honestly, I'd be down to do more nothing maps. Nothing maps are just ridiculous. They're fun. They're crazy. Everyone plays out a little differently, so... All right, Sensitive Boy on the way to Imp. Also, we have uh, Imperial Age on the way for Tomatrix. And... Rams from Emperor Matt. Research Fletching... And now we have rams. Wait a second. Wait a second. There is an onager. That tells me yellow wants to kill somebody. Right? You make onager for the trees, and then you make rams for their base. That could be a problem for somebody. That, okay, maybe he misclicked it, because after the first ram came out, he canceled the second and is making another onager. <laughs> Trap, thanks for the 18. Thank you, Weeping Rose. Let's celebrate. And cut some trees. Oh, we're doing, we're doing it here. Yeah, I um, this is fun, man. It's so interesting when I stream this because there's a lot of people who will show up and complain about how slow it is, and yet those people always stay. It's interesting. I feel like even though you know this is bad, you just can't. You can't look away. You gotta know what what happens. It's like it's it's like the office. The first season is really weak, but they didn't really have the budget to do much then. And then you move on to future seasons, and it's not too bad actually. You, it begins to grow on you, and then suddenly, all you watch is the office. I don't know if that uh, describes your life at all, like it does mine. But uh, I did used to watch the office all the time. Oh my god. Oh my. It just dawned on me why yellow's going this direction, guys. Do you remember what this was supposed to be? Way back at the start. It was supposed to be King of the Hill and Regicide. And yellow hasn't played a, an online game with people since 20, 2003 or 2005. And so yellow's like, well, I've seen some King of the Hill games before. There must be a monument in the middle. Nope. There's no monument. Oh my. And it actually puts yellow behind because if yellow were to cut to somebody to trade, I mean, yellow would be the favorite right now. But yellow is genuinely cutting the whole way through the mid. Now, just, just for clarification, if it ever was King of the Hill, you would see it in the Fog of War. You would always see the monument. That's probably something yellow doesn't remember. Or maybe yellow wants to trade through the middle. Like maybe he wants to trade with blue. I could be wrong here, but 
something tells me that maybe the monument is the goal. <laughs> we also cannot see what they say, but I imagine Emperor is going to be asking questions at some point, so... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, maybe, to be fair to Tomatrix, maybe it was a bug. Um, that, that caused it to be no King of the Hill. Um, he was into the game, they started the game, and he couldn't really... He might have messaged me, actually. I never tabbed out to look, so... But yeah, it could be because of an alliance. But it kind of seems like Yellow's making military to control the monument. <laughs> the non-existent monument. Ah! Populations are looking pretty good. The lowest is a sensitive boy. Um, and a sensitive boy is an imp with a lot of gold, but doesn't have anything to show for it. And no siege workshop, so just chopping trees for now. Kazemi says we have a working force, nothing 256 tech, by the way. Kazemi, you know better than to tell me that during this, because what's going to happen is this game's going to go on for another two hours, and then I'm going to be tired, and then everyone's going to say, Oh, but, but T90, the 256 tech, it'll be faster. It won't be that long, man. Let's do it. And then it's going to go on forever, and it's it's going to be a very long night. You know exactly what you're doing. All right. That that gate tells me that yellow is 100% looking for the monument. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. This is funny. At what point does he realize there's no monument, though? I guess when you get to the middle middle, it's close. Just cutting into... It's, it's the road to nowhere. This is great. Thank you, Nosator, for the Twitch Prime. Thank you, you Gold Porco, for the Twitch Prime. Did you know that if you subscribe with Twitch Prime right now, that Yellow will find out there's no monument in the middle? This is a great way to lead to no new Twitch Prime subs because everyone wants Yellow to struggle. That is the main source of entertainment right now. Supreme Moron. Well, it makes sense a moron would sub to my stream. Thanks for that. Uh, thank you, Relquin. Hmm. Wait, his allies can see him. <laughs> I forgot about that. And Tomatrix just signaled it. Tomatrix is probably like, bro, what are you doing? That's funny. I didn't think about the fact that no one was telling him. Or maybe maybe Yellow is genuinely trying to go kill Blue. Maybe Blue... You know, this is why you never make jokes or make fun of someone in the Twitch chat. Because Emperor Matt, he hasn't played in a community game before, but he remembers that Elbav... Uh, El Elbanovic called his mom fat once. He remembers that. Sorry, I kind of butchered the name there and butchered the joke, but... I just want to see Yellow walk all the way back to his base with all of his military ashamed. You know, like, oh no, what was I doing? If he turns around and sends everything back to his base, I'm going to laugh so hard. <laughs> it seems like... I mean, he's he's... Still cutting, so who knows? Oh man, that's a good laugh right there. What a legend. Remember, everyone has kings, so it's very possible for Yellow to go cut towards someone and kill their king. Considering he has military and surrounding players are in castle age. And getting a castle is not a guarantee because castles cost stone, and right now. Oops, wrong button. Um, oh god. Oh. oh. There we go. Uh, 395 gold to buy 100 stone, and that will only increase. He's going to build a monument in the middle? Yeah, I don't know about that. And of course, the map has no gold. So buying castle is a pretty big deal. And then getting to trade is priority number one. Oh, whoa. Traders revealed that your king's location. Was that yellow that did that? Did yellow just... Re Who researched trees in there? Treason is 400 gold. I should be able to find out, right? That didn't show anything. Is green not allying anyone? Oh, God. Green doesn't know it's Diplo. Inflatulencer. Stop inflatulating and listen to the rules. Did oh, green did it. So green thinks that this is just straight up free for all. And green researched treason to find out all the king locations. It doesn't tell you who researched it. And yellow's actually heading towards green. 
And if you think about this, Green is the only... Well, no, Teal also didn't accept the alliance. Now that's weird. Why would Teal be allied with everyone except for Green, Yellow, and Red? They're either talking a lot or that makes no sense. If they were chatting and, you know, some not-so-kind words were said, I would get it. Huh. Okay. Dr. Trollmeister says, I think Yellow is lying about not playing since MSN. He wouldn't have known he could use an onager to cut since you need SO back in the day. I think he said online. Like, with, uh, like, multiplayer. Also, type a 1 in Twitch chat if you watch my content all the time, but you never play the game. Just as, just as an FYI. I think there's a lot of people who watch videos and know things, but they very rarely play the game. So... It wouldn't be too unheard of that he would maybe watch a lot of community games and, you know, say, well, if I get in, I'll play and have this be the first time. If you're talking, playing online, then yeah. Yeah, and maybe he plays against AIs or something. You know what tells me, like, what really bothers me about him is that he won't refresh his lumber camps for efficiency. Look how far away his lumber camps are. <laughs> his villagers are walking so far, man. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so maybe he just plays with friends. Emperor Matt is like, he's the guy in the friend group that everyone thinks could go pro. But in reality, he just has his hotkeys down for the most part. And that means he's way better than all of his buddies. <laughs> his buddies play on a zoomed out, like super zoomed in resolution and they can barely see things. And have no hotkeys and he's got all the hotkeys, so. Now, look at this from Green's perspective. Listen. <gasps> I mean, you would hear that and maybe be unsure. Oh, God, is green? Oh, green's researching sea geometry. Okay. And using trebs to clear out trees at the moment. But that's not going to be enough. I mean, sea geometer would own here. Yellow doesn't really have a way to take out any buildings. Or, or not, not buildings, I should say the castles. Um, let's we'll see if yellow is going to run through. I mean, this is actually good for green if he defends, because then he can run all the way to the middle. Update on red. Red's still in castle. Needs to sell some food and wood. Prices are probably not great. To Matrix and Imp now. And I think he's honestly just trying to go 200 villagers so he could sell wood and not even trade this game. See Green's reaction. His reaction is to make sergeants. Okay. Panic time. Running away. Green, don't kill your own stuff, please. Don't... Or, or yellow, don't kill your own units. Okay, so our first attack of the game. Sea Jonager would be huge here. Portuguese do not get Sea Jonager. So, I, I could see Yellow having some problems. Uh, he's currently going after the town center. The king is in the town center, actually. Kill that king and green's dumb. But it feels unlikely. I think that Sea Johninger is going to arrive. Uh, the Trebs are actually doing a good enough job. And if the TC goes down, the king will eject to the backside because the gather point's here. So, there's no way that Yellow is going to get that kill. But good to see some aggression. A little awkward there for a bit for Yellow. He's put his units on stand ground now, so they stop running into TCs. But uh, the Siege Onager, man. Here's the Siege Onager. Could be huge, man. Uh, uh, green, don't run. Don't. Oh, no. He's going to go into the shot. <laughs> oh, God. I hope the other one doesn't do that. He just clicked Yellow's Onagers, and it just happened to roll right underneath the TC. Okay, there we go. He's going to get one. <laughs> He's going to get two. Yellow might be looking at something else right now. And... Ah! Danger. Danger. Let's see if he has the confidence to micro it down. He brought in a bomber cannon. Ah! Split! What a beast! Get it! Get it! He's like, if Viper was in the same room right now, he'd be like, look at me. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain. I'm the micro nerd now. He even has yellow, man. Okay. TC still has the king in it. 
I'm not a big fan of the fact that green has done that. But I still don't think green should lose this king. Siege Omniger should just always dominate. And we're seeing it there. Another one. Okay. Yellow's Bombard Cannon is hitting the TC. This looks so, like, Green looks so stressed out right now, and he's also cramped for space. Look at that. Look at all these idle villagers. 61 idols. You see, Jamager. Boom! Like the slowest fight ever. But things are dying. We're getting there. If Yellow would have... I mean, he doesn't know the king is in the TC necessarily. But if Yellow would send in his arbs and then shoot down the TC, he could de he could definitely get it. Yellow's bad at using Portuguese. So judgy. Yellow's fine. Yellow's fine, man. He, he's, he did an all right job. Could have been better, could have been worse, but... He's being aggressive, which I think the problem with being aggressive here is where are you going to get gold long term? Could have utilized... Um, could have, could have utilized Fatoria, which is probably why some people are saying maybe he doesn't understand Portuguese as much. Oh! Honestly, might not even know that Fatoria exists. They went random sieve. Um, I think trading is still so important. I'm very surprised to see players are not doing that here. But at least we know we're going to have a fight between these two. Now, the worst thing for green is that green doesn't even know... Oh. Okay, green knows you can have friends. Never mind. I changed change what I said. Wow, so much space over here for Daisy Chain, who's getting Anarchy and um, uh, Perfusion. So you can produce Huskarls from the barracks and also Spammer Infantry pretty much instantly. Uh, the Lumberjacks on Blue's side are getting very close to Purple's side and vice versa. If you get the castles, I could see Magyar Hussar being really strong for Blue. Teal is... Uh, Got some barracks over here. Uh, we know what Teal's going to do with Malay, right? Horse Levy's probably already in. We're going to see a bunch of two-handed swordsmen that don't cost gold. What's the Matrix up to? Can't believe it has been over here. Villagers. And more villagers. Okay. Yeah, and Orange is also pretty close to chopping through to yellow. That's a good point. I mean, Orange, if it's opened up, Goths can destroy everyone right now. It's just about getting to that point. Okay, what's the plan here for green? Um, well, <laughs> take out the Orbalist with the trebuchets and drop another castle here. Ooh. I mean, castles are super expensive right now. If that were to get denied, or, you know, yellow were to have bombard cannons, that could be an issue. Okay... Castle has been spotted by yellow, and now green's gonna need siege hunters here. Don't tell me green just used all the gold to. Okay, at least some siege hunters are on the way. Still plenty of wood to sell. But the approach that some players are taking is go maxed out on vils and just constantly sell food and wood for gold. So we don't have anyone trading. Uh, which is. The other thing about trade in a diplomacy setting is that you then have... I'm trying to think of a way to describe this. You've built up trust in somebody. It's a simple thing, but if you're trading with someone, you're less likely to attack them. And so that can be good in diplomacy. It kind of seems like everyone's just trying to battle the elements, battle the trees. And they're being their own... Uh, there, as Green tries to repair that castle with stone he doesn't have. Don't you dare buy a hundred. No! Did you really buy a hundred stone to repair that castle, Green? In Flatulencer. No! 575 gold to buy a hundred stone to repair a castle that's going to go down anyways. Woo! But I suppose in any other, in any other map, in any other situation... You would probably want to do that, so. Portuguese Bombard Cannons, not bad. And the Siege Onagers are looking less and less uh, terrifying. Yellow's consistent aggression here is, is definitely making some waves at Green's base. I think Green could be the first one to go down. 
Damn, but scouts are not gonna cut it. And uh, Siege on a draw! Oh, big shot. Now there's one bomber cannon on 14 HP. I think this is gonna be uh, a never ending cycle where green slowly starts to lose ground and yellow eventually gets the win unless something changes. Oh, oh, this is what we waited two hours for. Yellow, watch out, there's a siege on us there. Oh, goodness, man, everything's dead. Dead. No goal on the map. Losing your Arbalest feels bad, man. And you look away for a moment just to, to tend to your trees, and that's what happens. Bomb or cannon gone. Is green attack rounding? <laughs> Yellow ran into it. Yellow ran... Wow, perfect attack round from green. You know, it's not frequently that you see uh, players attack rounding with success in community games. Because they're just regular Joes, but... Made it happen. Yellow's still sending some units in here to continue to try. Woo! All right. All right, so I've noticed that the farming is insane from Daisy Chain. And it, now Daisy Chain is cutting towards green. Daisy Chain has 106 or 196 villagers, 92 on farms with goths, and has 18,000 food, 97,000 wood. Could make halberdiers for days. And halberdiers for days would currently kill nothing for days. Um, I think, honestly, with the amount of halves you can make with goths, you could probably kill arbs, too. The KD wouldn't be pretty, but... Um, but yeah, it seems like orange might want to take out green. Maybe um, maybe orange and yellow are buddy-buddy right now. Hard to say. I just feel... Now, obviously, people sign up to play community games, but I do always feel for the people who spend two hours chopping trees to then just die, you know? But, <laughs> you know, they did sign up to play, and I'm sure uh, if you would have told them they'd be the first to die, they would still probably want to play and give it a shot, so. Uh, purple and blue have now chopped through to each other. Now, I'm not seeing any trade, which is astounding to me, but I do see double markets, so maybe blue will think about that. And teal definitely is. I think teal's gonna cut to the corner, and they're going to have this very long trade route. Maybe go to the corner and then you could trade with purple over here. Uh, the light cav are going to... They're going to make an impact here. And not the strongest impact, but if you have the food... I think it's going to it's gonna contribute a little bit. But oh no, now we have elite husk girls. This could be it for Inflatulencer. Inflatulencer, what a name. <laughs> What a name. Inflatulencer. I don't know Inflatulencer's life situation, but it'd be kind of funny if, like, he's at a family event and had his laptop, and his mom was like, Hey, hey, Jim, can I borrow your laptop for a second? I need to check my email. They're like, sure. And she, like, gets on and sees his username on everything on the computer is Inflatulencer. Try and explain that one to your mom. Uh, <laughs> uh okay. See, Jonathan goes down. Oh, man. Hmm. I mean, this is double trouble here for Green, who has shown the signs of panic with the Q. It would be two Light Cav, uh, two Cavalier, just, just clicking whatever is possible. And Portuguese Bomber Cannons and their accuracy coming in clutch here. The Green's down to 77 villagers and... Oh, has resigned. Has resigned before the King was killed. I'd rather take my own life then let you take mine. Wow, dude. And yellow doesn't have any Fatorias. And there was a time when we did a lot of Force Nothing where I said trade wasn't needed because you could just sell at the market. And I'm beginning to remember that now. Like, that is an insane army, but now green's already been dealt with, so. Now you, you might need to prepare for the inevitable attack from the goth player. Teal's still cutting to the corner. These players just kind of sharing space here with farms and whatnot. Still not seeing a lot of trade. Uh, but we have Siege Onager from a sensitive boy going towards the corner. Yeah, they're going to trade. They're definitely going to trade. Ah, uh, that's a good point. I don't think green was allied to orange. And so maybe, maybe orange uh, saw green as a threat because of that. 
But update on orange, and orange is allied with everyone except green, so. Salutes in chat, please, for Inflatulencer, though. I don't know what the Twitch username was for that person, because we have different Twitch and Steam names at times, but, uh... <laughs> Sorry, you're the first one to go out, but thanks for playing, and... Next time... I don't know what to say to do next time there, honestly. The 2v1 would be impossible to defend from. But I would say maybe make a few more production buildings to be able to deal with, with yellow. It's kind of a shame we didn't get to see more big siege monitor shots, but there are more siege monitors out there for other players. Uh, is orange attacking yellow right now? Oh no! No, Emperor Matt! Oh goodness, and now Emperor Matt has changed him to enemy, but it's too late. Oh jeez, that's such an expensive army. Bombard Cannon's 225 wood and 225 gold, plus the arbs, and then Huskarls just shreks it all. Yellow did drop a castle here in defense, though, you know, just to, to keep that area protected. But Orange could actually go the whole way through this little area that was cut. I think Daisy Chain is just going to try and wreck everyone with Goths here. 98 on food. 99 on food. Still adding farms. And they're very efficient, too. Look how well-placed they are. I'm jealous. Maybe a few more mills could be needed, but when you have 13,000 food, who cares, right? Now, um, there is a green market there. If Yellow wants to just fight everyone on his own, what you could do is you could just trade to that market. So, uh, Daisy Chain in a position to maybe do that. Another Bombard Cannon forgotten. And that will go down. Hey, sir. All right. Everyone's going at their own pace here. That's also the beauty of Force Nothing. There, there was a community game earlier where someone died one minute in. Not even kidding. At least in uh, Green's case, it took two hours. He, <laughs> he got to be on the screen for a bit before the death came in. Uh, Yellow now backing away and still making Arbalest. Something tells me Yellow doesn't know what to do here. Oh, don't you dare open that gate, Arbalest. Don't you dare. Oh! No! Okay, well, it could have been so much worse. I think these could be dealt with with a castle fire. But, um, you know, if, if these units get in here, what you're going to really want is hand cannons with Portuguese. And, okay, now we see some hand cannons in the queue. But they are queued after about 21 Arbalest. So it's going to take some time to get there. All right, the trade has begun. And for now, purple is just trading with blue. But if that trade eventually extends down to teal, that could be sick. That's This is kind of what I was expecting to see. It's so funny to me how Orange Loop is looping through the path that Yellow cut. He's like, thanks, buddy. And Yellow can't really do too much to stop it as uh, the husk girls are now in. I guess the spam is instant, but it takes a while for the husk girls to be shipped in here. Um, we got Chukunu and Elite Chukunu at that. For Jump Rope Jeremy, also getting cab upgrades and having Scorpions. And he doesn't seem to be taking to, to Matrix too kindly. I feel bad for Emperor. I mean, Emperor in many ways deserves the assist. I think Emperor would have killed Green. But now this castle's gonna fall. That was so expensive. And Goths are just gonna own here as Emperor is just looking to the stars like, what do I do? And I think Champion's now on the mines, but with seven on food, 600 gold, I don't think a tech switch is gonna be possible here. And I think Huskarls are just gonna kind of end this game. We could see Orange cut through here as well and just spam directly into Yellow's base. <laughs> I am actually 10. Thank you for the 37 months. I guess when you created that username, you were 10. Now maybe you're 13, so congrats on your birthday. Uh, Holy Noli, Red Arclight, what's up? 40, 404 HD, Vernmo. I thank you. Oh, this is a tough one, but I'm going to get it, all right? Fighting Ecker. Fighting Wrecker. Thank you. Um, when you get to three months, when you're back in a month, I'll get your name correct, I promise. It's actually funny. We're seeing some names on stream right now. I have not seen in months. The power of force, nothing. What's up, Rubix? You're one of them. Thanks for almost three years. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, we're, unfortunately, we're just kind of watching Yellow slowly come to grips with reality here. Um, hand cannons would be the play, like I said. Hand cannons are only 35 HP, though, so if the Huskarl's getting close, they still kill them. And hand cannons are 50 gold a pop. Which is why I think hand cannons need a bit of an HP buff. But uh, we shall see, we shall see. The champion switch would take some time and resources that Yellow doesn't really have. And, ooh, what the? Red is walking through Gray's base, so this must be, oh! So, Tomatrix and Jump Rope Jeremy are going to be on the same team here. And they're going to go and fight the Malay player. Now, the Malay player is making two-handed swordsmen, albadir, and some scorpions. Keep in mind, though, that the Malay player has to have Force Levy, which means that the two-handed swordsman only costs gold. But you know what I've been saying about Malay for however long they've had that? It's still two-handed swordsman. It might only cost food. I think I said gold. I meant to say food. Um, it does not only cost gold. But it still means that it's an inferior unit to champion. It still means it struggles against archers. Basically, what I'm getting at is, it still means it's bad. So if you've got that gold, you're probably going to want to be spending it on something else with this. Otherwise, as we have some traffic jam here, I think that Mansion's just going to end up going down. And Yellow was just defeated. Salutes and respects in chat, please. As Daisy Chain has entered my mind as the favorites to win this game. Look at those resources. Woo! Crazy economy. Okay. Yeah, I... The situations where Malay two-handed swordsman only costing food uh, is strong is in situations where people only have food. So it's kind of funny because you think on Force nothing would be strong because people don't have access to gold. But if you look at even his gold count, it's very clear that if you sell enough food and wood, even without a lot of trade, you're going to be fine. Now, Blue's trading up, and that gold count's looking crazy. Sensitive Boy is as well. They're going to be a strong force, but uh, you can still do it without the trade, guys. And I think this might be the end for another player. Right around the, the 145, two-hour mark is where things really started to get crazy here. I mean, Teal's got the Q as well, even adding more barracks, but just the units are, are just bad. The matchup kind of sucks as well. I mean, Chinese, I don't know what more you can really do with Malay. Maybe elephants, honestly. Mixing in elephants might be good. The Chinese with their scorpions and Chukunu are really good against that, and then Burmese also having their, their champions are going to be strong. So maybe if the Q is a lot faster for Teal, uh, could end up pushing this with inferior units. All right, uh, Orange has cleared out yellow and is clearing out all the buildings, including the market. So Orange, again, showing there's no interest in trade. This is funny. The Treb's blocking the path. Bombard Tower is the only tanky thing that Malay has. Yeah, but the, it's expensive. At this point, you're looking at 600 gold to buy 100 stone. Yep, around that. So I don't think Bombard Towers are really going to do enough for you. But I think... I mean, it could have been a mix of, of two-handed swordsmen and elephants. It could have been a mix of two-handed swordsmen and arbalest. You're saving a lot of gold to be able to make those other things. So maybe it's just... It's also a 2v1. So, you know, Teal's Q looks pretty solid. Or did look pretty solid. There's the Q again. But reality is, is you're just being double tier. And Blue doesn't seem to care. Blue has just housewalled this backside. Blue has no interest in saving Teal. So, lack of diplomacy there for Teal. Maybe Teal thought he would be best buds with Tomatrix, and Tomatrix went the other way. Now, there is a risk, right? Red is currently working through Tomatrix's base. If Red wanted to be sneaky, he could make six or seven trebs here, and then walk him through and just surprise Tomatrix and kill him. So, if I'm Tomatrix, I wouldn't be totally comfortable with people going through my base. But then again, I'm super paranoid. You guys make me hugely paranoid, paranoid Excuse me, in community games because... So many people try and kill me, man. And I know it's because you guys just want to rewatch my screams <laughs> as I die. You want to be the one who sniped the streamer. You want to watch everyone laugh. And you want to watch the VOD and listen to what I have to say. So I always, I don't, I cannot trust people. 
then the problem is I end up being really um really aggressive and then I feel bad if I kill somebody. <laughs> now orange might end up saving teal because look at what's about to happen. Orange is going to uninter cut through. Red is distracted. And Huskarls are going to end Red's life. And it could then end Matrix's life too. And Teal is actually going to survive this. Yellow has been uh, it just wiped off the face of the earth. Emperor Matt. Might as well have run into Genghis Khan here. There's no history of you. Not sure what that, uh, what that terrain change looks like, but I'll think about it. Arbalest against Chukunu. Well, we've seen... Er, against Chukunu. Am I dumb? Uh, Huskar. We've seen that before. Scorpions? With Chinese might be okay, but... Huskarls are actually pretty good against Scorpions compared to something like Champion. And so Red is probably going to panic here. Still seems to have the gather point for a lot of the stuff set forward. But Matrix is going to be fighting a 1v1 and might even need to turn around to deal with the incoming threat of Daisy Chain. Yellow confirmed in chat that he thought it was King of the Hill when he started cutting to the middle. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Yeah, that's that's to Matrix's fault. So maybe Daisy Chain will kill him next. I do like Burmese against Goths, though, if they go full champion. It's really strong. To Matrix's Q is a little... First off, it's extremely random. Does he not use control groups and multi-Q at all? I don't I don't understand that, but um but as as Daisy Chain has just changed to Matrix to enemy, as if to indicate I'm coming for you next, I guess Matrix is already here. Um you know, you're gonna need champion and only champion, I think, if you're to Matrix. Now watch what happens here. Teal stabilizes. And then he's probably going to come in and hit Tomatrix. And Tomatrix is going to have to deal with threats from either side. Now, that's a lot of Rocketry Scorpions. That's a lot of uh, Champions and Chupinu coming in. So we'll see what happens here. The Reds King is inside that Town Center. The, the best way to stop Goths, uh, as someone is asking, is normally stop them from getting to... They don't have an Eco Bonus. So it's normally stop them from getting to Imp and having good economy. Uh, red topped into another town center here. I actually think Orange is making a mistake. I think he should just be fighting the units instead of, of going for the king here. But yeah, if you cannot... Um, if you cannot stop Gots from getting there, going for champion with, with scorpion or something like that is fine. Champion hand cannon would be the best two things to mix. Uh, Burmese do get hand cannons, right, chat? I think... I think they do, but they lack armor in the blacksmith, which makes it a little awkward. But <laughs> look at these husk girls, man. How many units does Orange have queued up? It's only out of eight barracks? Eight barracks, and it's that fast. Just got things, man. With Onagers, which will take out the Scorpions and the Siege here as Red's trying to regroup. I imagine the panic is real right now. It, it, normally there'd be panic, but also I think they're very much aware that wait Sensitive boy just sent orange 400 wood On forest nothing Why would you send someone wood in the first place? But 400 wood on forest nothing is like if I'm Jeff Bezos and you give me a penny you found on the street. I don't Understand <laughs> It's insulting. Get your dirty penny away from me. Okay, we've got Jaguar Warriors with full attack. Well, I'm actually not full attack upgrades, but attack upgrades for Sensitive Boy. Um, it's it's the spirit behind the gift that counts? Mm, no. <laughs> no. I mean, yes. It's the thought that counts in some ways, but a dirty penny off the... You, you cannot give me a dirty penny you picked up off the ground. And tell me that it's the thought that counts. I'm sorry. You can't do it. I don't care who you are. The Matrix providing a distraction here, which is nice. He's actually picking off some of the vills that might build forward production. And now Red and, and Gray have stabilized, but now Teal is coming in. This is so funny. The Matrix must hate his life right now. And Red as well. They don't know which side to deal with. And they thought working together would be good for them. But in reality, they are the they are the meat in this sandwich. 
And guys, this is why people like Force Nothing. Is this not a good game? This is a good game. We got to tell some stories, talk about life, answer questions. I, of course, still answer questions, but... Okay. To the person who just donated one cent to me, there's no pop-up because it's it doesn't meet the requirement. Thank you for the dirty penny. Now, I'm pretty sure I get about... I think 40% of that is taken from me. So it's not even a dirty penny. All right? Thank you. You're so kind. What a what a great donation there. Okay. Um, here come the, the two-handed swordsmen. With skirms now, which... Dude, why are you not making Arbalest here, Teal? I, I guess if this goes super late, Teal wants to have gold. It's kind of the, the whole idea behind the strategy in the first place, right? Um, I, I'm just wondering what the gold counts are going to look like for blue and for sensitive boy. And this is a pretty... This is a beautiful narrative that I haven't brought up too many times. But when I selected sensitive boy to play... Sensitive Boy said, I'm very scared and was was frightened of the game. And then Elbanovic is playing in his or her first community game ever. So, I mean, these are players who are a bit on the newer side or the more noob side. And they're teamed up together and they're trading. And Blue has 39 on gold with 8,000 gold. Resources are going to be insane. But I think logically, you're probably also looking at players that are just less skilled. So all the low elo champs out there, all the people who can relate are going to be rooting hardcore for Sensitive Boy and Elbanovic. Bed of Rosa says, is the 48-hour stream this month or next month? Asking for a friend. Uh, it was actually last weekend. You missed it. It was a good time. I, I was wondering where you were, but um, it's sad you couldn't make it. It was exhausting, but it was a good time. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, red and gray are just going to... Do this in cycles where they have to swing over to each side over and over again. But right now, it's Matrix is 200 pop, but he, he needs to get... Honestly, he needs to delete Lumberjacks. Having 68 Lumberjacks when you have 40,000 food is too much, or wood is too much. But yeah, he's got to swing over here to deal with this. Swing over here to deal with this. But I guess Teal's going to help him out by killing his bills. Yeah, that's actually going to be good for Tmatrix because he's going to have more champions out. And the champion should own the two-handed sword. But uh, we'll see what the numbers are like. Uh, Latin Gardura, uh, Godura, sorry, says, Hi, T90. How's it going, amigo? It's going good. Good day. Good games. This is, this has been solid. So, can't complain. Cannot complain. WM, thank you for the nine months. Thank you, Africanus, for the five. And McLagan for the five. Five months ago. What happened five months ago? That was January. Did we do anything special in January? I don't know. But thank you guys for making it to the stream finally. Uh, uh, interesting trade. You know, the way... I don't even know if this cut from a sensitive boy made this more efficient. It's kind of like we're watching a race right now. It's so weird. All right. Arbalest swinging back over for red. Red, if you rewatch this, uh, patrol into fights. Patrol on attack stands, because I'm seeing a lot of clicking. And if you were to patrol forward here, they would be automatically attacking. But So now they go to address Teal. Now, what do you think is going to happen when they go to address Teal? The goth player is going to be here. Now, Daisy Chain should probably check into champion, uh, tech into champion, and make some champs in with the Huskarls, because... Having your own champs, even though they're inferior, uh, they're still very cheap, and it's just going to be tossing less away. Heavy Scorpion wouldn't be too bad there either. Uh, Big Rob says, T90, what's stronger, Mayan Eagles or Aztec Eagles? Uh, Mayan Eagles. So Aztec Eagles are better at at um, sniping Vils, which would be the big thing. Because uh, I think they snipe it one less hit or something. Again, Red's not. There we go. Good fight. But Mayan Eagles having 100 HP is definitely the go-to. Uh, because it, Eagles without Eldorado have 60 HP, which is pretty low. <laughs> Emperor, thanks for the five. That's actually so funny to me. You'll have to rewatch our reaction to that. Now, we, we, um, we figured as much. And 
that is to Matrix's fault. So it's Matrix is facing the karma for uh, for what he did there, but or didn't do. It is crazy to me though. Red has 120 military. The eco's really not strong, but there is some trade. Everything gray had just disappeared, but this is a crazy ball here. I would love to see an onager shot or bomber cannon shot on those scorpions, though. That's 34 scorpions stacked. Oh, there's... Oh, no, it's rams. Oh, it's rams. Feels bad. Yeah, no worries, Big Rob. Now, Big Rob, it depends how you're going to play it. Because mass... Like, picking a sieve to go eagles... Uh, Aztecs would probably be the better pick. You could even argue Incas because your villagers are affected by blacksmith upgrades in Castle Age, which keep you defended. If you're going to just pick a sieve to mass eagles, going Aztecs is better because they can mass the units faster. Um, whereas Mayans would normally be a little bit more towards archers. But if you're talking post him strength, then yeah, Mayans. Because they survive a lot longer. 12,000 gold and counting for blue. 8,000 gold and counting for a sensitive so nice boy. To see community games again. Let's see you play in next. Much love. You just want to kill me. Ian, thank you. You just want to kill me. Oh, there's Onager. Now the scorpions are no longer stacked. But we still could see some decent shots here. Okay. Boom. Bam. Not bad. Kind of sucks that Malay don't get Siege Onager here. Again, Malay don't have any really good gold units. They, they have no powerhouse gold unit. Red has misclicked the ram over the Onager. <laughs> oh, no! I can't tell what is the red unit and what is the blood from red units dying on the ground. Yeah, maybe, maybe elephants. They are cheap elephants. Yeah, I think... I said earlier I think elephants would have been the best way to spend your gold. That is such an insane ball from Red. And that one Onager has done such work against it. Mm. Alright, so we have Red defending to Matrix, and we have to Matrix defending Red. Not exactly what I expected here, but I don't think that's going to work because the Goth player has forward production. And if the Goth player has forward production, it's always going to outlast and outspam the production from to Matrix. Which is actually pretty close, but... I think to Matrix and Jump Rope Jeremy are going to see the end soon. That could be wrong, actually. Jump Rope Jeremy might take Mansion down with him. Trebs will take out that castle there. So many kills for Red here. This is insane. 500 kills, 325 deaths. Now the Onagers are coming out, though. Oh, so close. Ah! Yeah, the goth spam is just going to be incessant here. Bombard cannons to back it up. That could take out the buildings if the, if the infantry doesn't. Who would have thought that goths would, would be the go-to here? Red's lost a lot of those scorpions, a lot of those shukanu, a lot of the arbalest. Could lose all the siege as the economy is going down. So again, I think orange kind of saving teal's hide here. But blue and purple haven't fought anyone all game. Almost three hours, no fighting. Still living in peace while the world around them fight amongst them. Fight amongst themselves. I butchered that iPhone, but it's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the the thing that's, that's a concern for all the players here is long-term resources. We've mentioned it so many times. And there's three players right now who have good long-term resources. Daisy Chain, 11,000 gold, and Goth units do not cost a lot of gold, so that's fine. 105 farmers. Um, and then the, the two in the north, Sensitive Boy and El... Elbanovic, sorry, that keeps screwing me up. Teal's gold count and food count and everything else is not looking great. Blue's looking fantastic. And not too bad for, for a Sensitive Boy either. But I've noticed that a sensitive boy is missing blacksmith upgrades. And I have to be a little bit more uh, tiptoey around what I'm about to say because of this person's username. But it has been 2 hours and 47 minutes. So I, I don't mean to upset a sensitive boy <laughs> by saying this, but probably have had a little bit 
of extra time to check the blacksmith. But maybe not. You know, and maybe not. Nothing to get too upset by. It's a rookie mistake, though, right? You, you just forget. You're doing everything else. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Burmese champs are, are cleaning up here, and Tomatrix has a Q, but he's not going to have Eco because Teal is now swinging in, and that's kind of the concern. Tashtay says it's fine, I missed him too. Yeah, did you go back and listen to what I said about that? That was pretty bad, man. The split from Tomatrix, what a beast! Really, aren't all Orange needs to do is patrol these in to protect these. Yeah, there you go. Shouldn't lose one there. Yep, keeps him alive. Shots are just insane. And more barracks, too. Now, Orange doesn't have any trade, so I suppose in theory the gold could be an issue, but I think there's going to be enough food to sell. Or it won't be. And actually, did Orange delete Vils? Feels like there's empty farms here. Oh, yep. You can either it's the plague or Orange is deleting Vils. Bomber cannons will go down, though. So Orange just wants to have more infantry out here to overwhelm. Yeah, Kashtai, <laughs> I said that, I, I pointed out how you were 1700 and still forgetting blacksmith upgrades just to make everyone else feel better about themselves. Oh, they're cutting together. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. They trade together. They cut together. They farm together. Oh, man. And well, we have this weird graphics bug. What is, the trees are disappearing. What the? This game, man, I, I, it's just something new every day, and it's nothing that I get excited about, but whatever. I guess it has been, you know, the devs don't exactly prioritize their uh, their time into force nothing, so. But yeah, they're best friends forever, and they're going to cut through the trees. And I just, purple, purple doesn't have any defense upgrades on infantry, and has one range making arbs and skirms, and the other one making nothing. So it's just, I love it. And, and listen, a sensitive boy and Elbanovic, the fact that you're a bit on the newer side makes this more entertaining. Don't feel bad about that. There's Those are easy things to fix. You're just going to a blacksmith and clicking a few buttons, nothing. This takes experience. And there's probably a lot of stress, too. And it's interesting they've actually cut to the path that Yellow had cut earlier. So they could access Orange with this. <gasps> what if they kill Daisy Chain? Guys, Blue has fully upgraded Paladins. They could run right to Daisy Chain and kill Daisy Chain. And let me see, are they allied with Daisy Chain? They are allied with Daisy Chain. For now. <laughs> Let's go! Here he goes. Now, I don't think 16 Paladins is the best number. But don't worry, we have 59 Aztec military units on the way behind it. Plus another 26 Paladins. It was really the sensitivity of the, that boy. That made Daisy Chain feel like, I can delete my eco. I don't need to worry about them. It pays to be sensitive, guys. Hmm. Uh, the king is currently inside of that town center. And... Oh! Oh! Don't sit there, Blue! Okay. Daisy Chain noticed, I think, and is going to add house walls. All right. So, this entire army is currently house walled out. That said, it's houses. <laughs> Uh, at the very least, what this does for Daisy Chain is give Daisy Chain time to react and send more military back home. And oh my god, big mistake. Has accidentally dropped a castle in the only choke point that leads home. And now all the units are going to have to path. I don't know where they path now, actually. But panic time for Daisy Chain. Look at them go. <laughs> Blue's paladins are so confused. Blue's paladins are like, I can't go through here, but also I can't go back the way I came. There's pointy things everywhere. And this saves red and Tomatrix a little bit. Actually, it doesn't save red. Red's about to die, I think. Oh! Run, Santa! Run! Santa's fast, man. Those cookies give you energy. Uh, let's see what the path thing is like. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Not your own trade cart. Uh-oh. Anyways, update over here. The king is in this castle. We have the town bell from the top score player. That's exactly what I needed in my life. King's still on the move, and king should survive unless Teal has something to say about it. And the paladins are now after the castle. 
Now, what what Sensitive Boy has here is really important for the king, and that's Arbalest. Arbalest that are missing Bodkinero and Bracer, and all defense upgrades. And for all we know, might also be missing Ballistics. But I would say instead of the farm Sensitive Boy, it's probably better to sit underneath the castle. But I think Sensitive Boy is also being attacked in the middle, so that this is a stressful time. And the king is now moved, which is a good move for Daisy Chain. Because if Daisy Chain would have given Purple time to sit next to the castle, it would be GG. And actually, the castle that looks that looked stupid earlier looks amazing now because Orange can hop into this castle and eject out the other side, I think. For some reason, it doesn't let... Is there a unit there? Ah, there's a villager there. You just can't see it. There's a villager behind the castle that's blocking it. And that's why it can't... There's only a one-tile gap. Now, Daisy Chain also loses a lot of eco here. Which, you know, is is going to be important here. Um, King is just, like, trying to, to walk and can't make it. Update on Red's King... Red's king. I don't even know. Hold on a second. Red's at a hundred pop. Um, oh, it's in that castle. I didn't. I didn't realize the color. And now what's Teal's position? Ah, uh, Teal's gonna kill, right? Yeah, I think Teal's gonna kill to Matrix and Red on his own now. But the timing on this attack from Sensitive Boy and Elbanovic was so good because now they've been trading together through the power of love, and they have all the gold and all the resources, and everyone else is struggling. So it actually was, the, I think, the perfect time to hit him. Because he wasn't prepared for it. And now that, that sets him back. Sets Daisy Chain back for a great period of time. Uh, Emperor Matt, thanks for the 15, too. Wait. Oh. Oh, you reset. I thought you donated the $5. That's why I didn't think Bad Boys. Bad Boys, thanks for the 5, sis. Out of all the civs, I got Sicilians. The one I never played. So I'd rather prefer to get humiliated by T90's... Bog the Builder again, Kappa. I don't even remember what you're referencing, to be honest, man. But yeah, sucks to get sucks to get Sicilians. I mean, at least they had at least they had Siege on injured, but it just seemed like the time you were attacked you weren't really ready for. Hmm. Teal continuing that push. Players have a habit of making buildings in the choke points. And then they try and run through the choke points, which is really weird to me. What the Oh my god! Orange deleted the castle! Orange didn't... Oh my god, that's the most expensive castle ever, and it's just been deleted. What was the price to get that? Okay, it was... Um... What the... Hold on a second. I... This is... This is difficult. 726 gold to buy 100 stone right now. So, assume he had to buy 700. And the price was a little bit less than that, and then do the math. And Orange didn't realize that one Ville was there. So he thought he had placed the castle and there was no path to get through. So ended up just deleting the castle so he could save his economy. And now has no gold. I mean, 1500 is is not nothing, but compared to that. Four and a half thousand gold, 53 trade units, and that many paladins queued. Yeah, blue sitting pretty right now. You really make me happy if a sensitive boy remembered the blacksmith. Sorry, everything's disappearing. Um, if you happen to be uh, drinking or on any substance whatsoever, know that this is the game, not uh, any adverse effects of what you were doing with your life. Stay safe. Um, I, I mean, I believe in Matrix's ability to... Uh, to reboom? But not with 61 farmers, or 61 villagers, excuse me. And while Malay are in many ways worse than Burmese, they now have the power of not having to spend gold. So it kind of worked out. But Daisy Chain is not finished, and Daisy Chain is now fighting against two players over here. Um, leaving Red kind of to be over here, and Red is trying to reboom a little bit, but it's going to take forever. Hmm. All right. Castle for blue is very well placed to, to make it more difficult for orange to push through this position. Jaguar warriors are insanely strong against gods, but unfortunately for purple, while they are elite, 
hasn't researched Garland Wars, which means that they don't have plus eight. Big onager shots here. And then doesn't have any armor upgrades. But I still think Jags with 12 plus four are going to be fine here. And nothing quite like well-placed onager shots, right? Q's still looking terrifying for Orange. And he could always run this direction, too. What a crazy game, man. Over three hours. This is force nothing. This is why we show up to watch this, man. Why did why did we wait eight months to do force nothing again? I forget. It's actually super fun. But yes, it's a meme, okay? A28 is one of the biggest force nothing fans there is. And yes, it's a meme. Um, it wasn't ever supposed to be popular, but it is genuinely entertaining. As oh, don't you click through there! You know what the path thing's like. Oh, I think blue. Blue, hello. Your horses, they're dying. Oh, he can't leave because purple's in there, I think. Your patience in such games is inspiration <laughs> to me. Uh, Tarzan says, your patient, patience on such games is an inspiration to me. You know, guys, that is both a compliment to me and a diss at Force Nothing. Right when we had to bring up that Force Nothing was good, Tarzis is like, I disagree. He's one of those. He's one of those. Burn him at the stake. I'm kidding, Tarzis. What's up, Tarzis? It's been a bit since I've seen you. Hope you're doing good. Uh, all weekends, I'll be casting Red Bull Qualifiers. So if you want something that does not involve lots of trees and trade, um, well, I'm sure we'll see some trees and hopefully won't see some trade. I'll be online all weekend, so. Hey, guys. My plan tomorrow, since I was really bad this week with schedule, uh, I will be live at around noon Eastern and cast the last, like, three to five hours of the uh, uh, day one of the Red Bull Qualifier. And then the... Oh, man. So many dead units here. On Sunday, I will cast all four best of sevens to see who qualifies. No blacksmith updates. Purple just made a blacksmith and is researching updates. He used to have Garland Wars and chemistry, but no blacksmith updates. Are you drunk? New, new com... I don't understand. I'm sorry, I really don't understand. Orange's KD right now is 1,900 kills and 1,600 losses. And if you have a positive KD with Gots and post imp, that means you're doing something right. Daisy Chain is a really good player. Um, Daisy Chain also has been like a big supporter of mine, uh, active throughout all the big tournaments and whatnot, which is really cool to see. You know, these guys, these guys, these tryhards out here, the guys who appreciate the, yep. the crazy competitive scene, also supporting and, and being a part of this too. So. Hmm. Daisy's like 1200. No, I have no clue what Daisy's rating is. Pretty looks pretty close to yours, whatever that is, Strode. But I, I have no clue what your ratings are. So, I feel like uh, the level you both bring is uh, pretty. <laughs> I'm kidding. I just I made that joke because I think Strode is 1600. So, Dave says, "Oh my God, this is still going." Dave, you missed one thing there. You have to put an exclamation near the end. So it's like, "Oh my God, this is still going." That's how Dave really meant to say it, but he's really bad with uh, punctuation sometimes. So, yeah. welcome back, Dave. Glad you could make it. I know you're busy with work and life and all the. Uh the Matrix is here. It's a party at Orange's base. <laughs> Dave says I'm not writing your YouTube titles for free. That would actually, Dave. Honest though, honestly. What if I paid you to, to like I, I'd highlight a game. And then I just had you give input on the thumbnail and the title. Everything I already do with my editor for a week. Just, just to figure out if you have more of a grasp and understanding of clickbait or whatever you call it than I do. I, that would actually be a really interesting test. But then what if yours brings in like 30% more views and 30% more subs? I'm pretty sure that means you just own my channel then. I, I, I'm no legal expert, but that would be a problem. Hmm. Um. I mean, that's a lot of two-handed swordsmen. I know they're, they're they are only two-handed as opposed to a champion, but okay, two-handed swordsmen do look really cool though, especially the way he throws his 
They really use their hips when they swing that thing. Look at that. Uh, uh, uh. The sword even looks longer than a champion. Where's a champion? I need a champion. Champion just looks so... Not so great. Oh, the king's over here. And what do you... Matrix might have spotted that, but there's no way to get the kill. As blue is showing up. And onagers might be the trick. Siege onagers, though. Oh, man. Oh, geez. I mean, here there's an opportunity for Orange to get in close and kill them, maybe. But he also could lose everything. Oh! Oh, God. Blue clicked a halberdier that was in that other group. <laughs> no! And Red was defeated. I think that happened around here. It's kind of expected, right? He was into Matrix's base. I'm trying to follow these Siege Onager shots here. Oh, the Jags are getting more updates now. It's right. They're getting updated. As uh, new comp said with that dono four minutes ago. So we're looking at 12 plus 6 plus some armor. That's helping, definitely. Um, I mean, Daisy Chain for a while here has been looking light on eco and pretty much only has the res to make helps. But that's not that's not a long-term thing, even with goths. Only four on wood with 6,000 wood. That's going to disappear pretty quickly here. Uh, Blue's trebs, they're a little ambitious there. And I have noticed that blue and purple are... They struggle with unit control just a little bit. Thankfully, Siege Onagers, for the most part, don't need to be micro But uh could see those end up going down here in a moment. I, I don't love the Cav Archer switch, honestly from blue, but I guess he's making it because he's seeing a lot of helps. Oh god, don't not your own trips. Please, not your own trips. They're getting ahead of themselves here. Oh god, not your own trips. Okay. Alright, it's fine. Daisy Chain is just stubborn as a mule here. Daisy Chain's gonna defend from this. Big time. But to Matrix is down to but I was running now uh, and has some hustlers. Has no TC, has no eco, will have no houses. The Matrix will be the next to go down, and then it comes down to what Teal wants to do. <laughs> if Teal goes over towards Sensitive Boy and Elbonovic's eco, I'm going to lose it, though, because that's going to make this game go on so much longer. Not that I'm not enjoying myself, but that'd be crazy. Okay, where is the Matrix going? Oh, don't tell me he's going to seek safe haven in... <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Orange just has random halves there that he's forgotten about. This is almost like it'd be from some type of a campaign. And they would surprise you, you know, in the woods. But, um... But yeah, I think that Gray's going to try and get over to Blue and Purple's base. And we know Blue and Purple are nice. But can he get villagers there? Teal's chasing. Teal's looking. Teal just researched treason. There goes to Matrix. I don't think... It says he has 29 bills. Here's 28. So... No, no. And the king starts... Uh, counts as a bill. So, yeah. This is all of to Matrix's eco. So, king is just going to sit in there for now. Um, And Teal should finish that off. Now, Jaguar Warrior with Cav Archer is the perfect comp here. Because the Jags own the Halbs and the Huskarls, and then the the uh, Cav Archers hit from range. So now you can maybe have a little bit of confidence with your Siege, if you are blue and if you are purple. Purple's still missing some upgrades, but it's way better than before. 12 plus 6, plus armor. Feel, feels good, man. Would it be... Would it be a mistake from Teal to try and attack blue and purple right now? At. Don't tell me he's gonna defend. Is he? Are teal and orange gonna form an alliance? I think. Is he? What's he about to do? No, he's going after the matrix. This is looking awfully fishy. I mean, in order to have a chance, teal should team up with orange, so they could have some trade, I guess. Hmm. But is it too late? Let's look at Blue's resources. 6,000 gold with 53 trade cards. Not bad. The 
king for uh, for orange is inside of this castle, and this might be the moment. It'll eject after a few more hits. Blue wants to get underneath the castle. Little preemptive. Um, but I think still should have enough cab archers to kill the king. I think after, it'll take one more tread volley. Oh, no, there it is. And get the king. Get the king. Get the king! Get the king! It's now hiding behind the house. Get the king! Orange might not even know where it is, honestly. Teal showed up to attack blue. You're kidding me. You're no, he doesn't see it, dude. The king is so fat and he's hiding behind the house. Ah! Get it! Oh, he saw it. He saw it. Got him. Never a doubt. Elbanovic in his first community game kills top score Daisy Chain. And now, oh my god, blue sent his king forward by mistake. What is happening? Blue, please realize that. He probably had it in a castle, and he saw the flag on the castle, and he set his gather point forward and ejected it. Now, Daisy Chain is dead, but does have units here, and it's very possible that Blue will group up all of his units and click them forward. And Teal now has military here. Tell me Blue will notice this. I mean, I will say it is a, a, an awesome move from the king to show support for his men. I wish in, like, Regicide games, your army would have 25% more attack or something if your king was with your men. I think other games have that. I don't know. Palisade walls from Teal? Okay. All right. I guess you have the wood for it. Um, but, yeah, so now Teal's got to think about the next steps, and I think the next step is to go after blue and, and purple, which seems like suicide. Oh, my God, blue. Don't... Blue doesn't realize, guys. No! His first community game ever! He just had such an epic moment! <laughs> no! 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 It's in there, guys! It's in there! He's walking right through everything! And how is he not taking hits? Okay, he took some hits. Orange is in there! No! No, 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 no! I feel so bad. I don't even know if Teal knew anything about that. Yeah. Certainly Blue didn't know anything about that. And he's probably like, no, what happened? Who killed me? And it'll probably take him about 20 to 30 seconds for it to dawn on him. If it makes you feel any better, Elvanovic, we have had players do that before. Uh, it's a very common thing with castles, which is why sometimes people will put it in towers. So now here we are. We have Tomatrix, who's technically still alive. Oh god, he has bills. Okay, okay Tomatrix is technically still alive. He is currently in a sensitive boy's castle with his king. So I suppose Tomatrix could, I don't know, reboom. Sensitive boy was terrified when the game launched, said so, and was a little worried. And then you have Teal, who is cutting through right now. What will Purple's reaction be? Purple actually has so much of his population in a useless part of the map now. Look at all this. All this pop is useless over here. There's no, there's no value in it here. Teal could spam everything. And I just saw a signal somewhere. Maybe, did Teal just research treason maybe? Yes. Teal research treason to find out where the kings are. Those Tomatrixes will, will be in here or here. And sensitive boys will be in there too. So you set, it, this sucks, because now you set your gather point at your base for your new units, but you don't get new units because everything's stuck forward. So you either click everything back to your base, or you delete your stuff right now if you're purple. But this sense of urgency that purple's now feeling, this is not a feeling that Sensitive Boy has had to feel up until this point. Uh, this is stress, you know, this is anxiety, and to Matrix... just died and I'm I think deleted it but it's interesting how blue has his units there he, there was a single on the map I think to matrix realized I'm not going to be able to reboom here and just deleted it unless purple did it but there purple wouldn't do that purple did it purple did it what a beast all right well he's gonna need those guts to win this game now it's um you know he's way behind in score and the other problems we've already mentioned. But one thing purple does have is the better the better units. With the elite Jaguar Warrior. Um, and also Siege Onager. 
We might see a long journey back home or maybe loop around here for purple and hit Teal from the other side. But don't worry, guys. Teal's going to be able to defend from the Jaguar Warriors and the Sea Giantors with these Palisade Walls. So Teal's fine on this side. Kind of a funny addition. Trade is going down, though, which is something that purple should probably try and deal with. But again, doesn't really have the pop here. And I, I think we're, we're clearly looking at Mansion, who is a more experienced player against Sensitive Boy first community game, I think, and a little bit of worry. And uh, <laughs> that's so smart. The, uh, the little house wall there from Teal to block the trade off entirely. But it's all right. They already have another path, so joke's on you, Teal. They, they've been trading on both sides this entire time. Hmm. <laughs> Sensitive boy is it's time for him to become a man. It's sensitive man now as he runs home desperately with all of his units. <laughs> oh boy. But I mean, it's the right play. It's either that or delete them, and I don't think you should delete them. So, I mean, some of the trade is still going to work. Let's see if purple's patrolling. It looked like a patrol to me. Just didn't patrol it quite as far as purple wanted to. Um, but with a quick re patrol, I think that. 18 Jags would do pretty well against the 35 two-handed swordsman there. Again, still missing upgrades, which is really a shame. And that Q from Teal is insane. I'm just wondering where the Siege is for Teal. How are you ever going to push this consistently if you don't have Siege? Like, adding a few Trebs would have cleared out Blue's Castles by now, and you could sit here a bit more comfortably. Great game, though, guys. Um... You know, we had our fun moments in the early stages, able to talk through things, and really, this is Tomatrix's fault. Tomatrix, no King of the Hill and no fast speed. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? But yeah, um, it, it's been good nonetheless. I've still had a really good time. And maybe just enough jacks to deal with those two-handed swordsmen. And, um... <laughs> and Tomatrix's turnout, mana per hustler wasn't enough. It's size six. Yeah, I know it's size six. Still could have used some fast speed. It's it's fine though. I enjoyed every second of this so far. It's been a quality game. And it still could swing either way. Now, do me a favor, chat. Type a one. If Hmm, let's see. Type a one. Hmm. If you would like to be globally banned from this channel forever. Okay, great. Uh, mods, get on that, please. I know you guys. If I hesitate, everyone types one anyway. So, see ya! Later. It's nice knowing you. Honestly, we have too many people nowadays, so just, just get rid of them, mods. Um, anyways, that, that was a joke, okay? Uh, but if you're rooting for... Tell me who you're rooting for. We, we'll forget the number method. The number method's old. Everyone's stealing the number method nowadays. It, it's We've got to come up with a new system. All right. So we got some people rooting for Mansion, we got some people rooting for Sensitive Boy. Is it safe to say that if you're rooting for Sensitive Boy, you relate and might indeed be sensitive? Maybe? Choo-choo! Here comes Mansion. I mean, I'm a sensitive guy, and I don't necessarily have a favorite here. Uh, the Rams are going in here, and that is where the king is. Don't tell me. There's no way this should ever work. Does purple, does purple have murder holes? <laughs> okay, it should never work. But if it does, how epic would it be? The castle's gather point is set right here, guys. As we have elephants, finally, from Teal. Is that going to be enough to eject the castle? I think purple noticed it. Okay, purple noticed it. The king's on the move! But was that intentional? That must have been intentional, so you must pay attention to it then. And it's now in this castle. Okay. Crisis averted. However, elephants with melee, they're very, very cheap, but they lack the final armor upgrade. Still a 300 HP unit with 18 attack. Very strong against um, Jags, I think. So it's a really good addition here. I was waiting for elephants back when Teal had gold before. And both players who've made it to the finals, essentially what this is, have really been through a lot in this game. Yeah. I'd say Teal has been through more. Teal has experienced more hardship. See if these elephants can survive to getting close enough. Think about how cheap these elephants are in, t in terms of gold cost. 
and how expensive siege onagers are, it's more than worth it to take out gold units with these elephants. Arbs as well, right? What's the armor on the Jags? Right now, he's missing the final armor upgrade, which is a big deal. Um, but I, I think the, the big theme I'm, I'm catching up on here is that... Uh, Purple's making a variety of units, doesn't have a lot of confidence in just using one or two, and that could maybe, in some cases, be tough to control. As we see, Teal just, just making moves here. Your Malay, your two-handed swordsman only cost food and you have 13,000 food. I like the commitment. Even just to take out the castle. You don't need to take out the important castle. But finishing this castle is huge. There's no way Purple's going to be able to rebuild castles in this game. Hey, Purple did have an army going this direction before. Teal seems to have noticed it. and Purple able to defend. Has the stronger units. Uh, might indeed keep this castle up. Blue's even helping with the paladin from the dead. Arbs are there. Uh, it'll go down. Yeah, I think that's a good move for Teal. Popping out over here and surprising Purple a little bit. I think we're starting to see Sensitive Boy become slowly overwhelmed in some ways. But it's, it might still take a bit of time for us to eventually come to the conclusion. Hasn't been able to make a push yet. But does still have a lot of units around that maybe need to be pulled over. Is he producing from... <laughs> These archer ranges are producing and sending it all back there. Well, no wonder the reinforcements are a little slow. All right. Um, chat. I am going to leave the computer for about 60 seconds. And if you're watching on YouTube, that might disappoint you because you like me to cast and all that. But believe me. Any power or knowledge or, or any value and entertainment I bring to the table is only because of my viewers. Because I, where would I be without them? I wouldn't know anything. So, uh, viewers, please cast this important moment. I will be right back. I have to do something IRL. Okay, I arrived back to hear Jipaloo in chat say, this is the best casting I've ever witnessed. Well, thank you. I'm trying my best here. Um, not sure what I missed, but I remember Purple having a little bit more in the way of military. And it looks like Teal is just spamming. Wait, can you hear me right now? I'm not. Okay, I'm good. Uh, and, and that might end up being Purple's downfall. Just not having enough Q. And also the units in the queue. Just a little random here or there. I'm hearing treps from purple. I'd like to hear the same from Teal. Teal is actually really bothering me with his insistence upon not making treps. <laughs> like, when Teal is a good position, Teal just won't make treps. It's two-handed swordsmen or, mil or uh, siege. That's kind of the outlook, I guess. But it might be the beginning of the end for purple. You know, before was working with a lot of trade. What do you do with Aztecs if you don't have gold? This is the point where Malay shine. Aztecs can't make Hussars. Uh, they can make Skirms and Pikemen. All of which is really poor against a two-handed swordsman. 
killing that trade was crucial to Teal's success. The timing on it, the way things played out might have been perfect because Purple was out of position. Elvanovic has been in chat. I forget what his Twitch name is, though. It's a little... I, wait, no. I think his Twitch name is Elbanovic. Elbanovic, did you just... Did you have any clue what went down? I wanted to get your comment on that. I imagine it was probably a, a mistake and you know you didn't realize, but... Uh, oh, jeez. And Teal just backing up here again. Maybe, maybe waiting for Siege. No, not really waiting for Siege. Four hours. Almost four hours. He typed it in chat. He had no idea. Um... I kept asking the others when I died who did it. <laughs> well, technically it was Teal who did it. So I think you found out now. Thank you, Electron. I'm glad you could make it. Wow, am I doing that bad of a job of showing you that? That someone has to do it? Well, thank you. 23 bucks? For that question? Now I just feel bad. Well, thank you. Uh, I've been on Teal's resources for a bit. He's got the food count there with 56 on food. Wood will certainly be fine. And then the, uh, resources for purple are... It's looking okay with gold. But that is, is, uh, not infinite anymore. Because he doesn't have trade. So, finite levels of gold. Making skirmishers and pikemen long-term, I think, will lead to some real problems. Also, I will always call mansion color teal always for better or for worse i'm stubborn i know will always be teal but i just wanted to bring that up because there's a few of you who keep trying to correct me every time and i know it's probably a lot of effort on your part to do it every time like i didn't see your messages you know oh i saw them so you, you can you know you can uh, maybe maybe just hold back on that a little bit more again the big issue with purple is not even just the resources but the cube um, these ranges are producing, but behind this, Teal has 25 barracks queued up. Even production, and even if arbs are in many ways the go-to here, uh, it should always die, especially with the bomber cannons. And now that we have the bomber cannons, we might actually have the end of the game. No, the trebuchet's purple! He's just a sensitive boy. What are you doing to a mansion? He doesn't deserve this. It's funny, the trebs are kind of a bait there for a second. It's like he'd rather uh, lose his trebs than his king. Now, this is kind of funny. Look in the castle. It's like the jaguar warriors are protecting the king on either side. Sensitive boy calls it at 3 hours and 51 minutes. The jags were not enough to protect the king. And uh, that is the end. Woo! That was a great game, dude. That was a great game. I mean, green and yellow died off rather early, so I do feel a little bad for them. Walk. But, you know, credit credit to yellow and green. They had a good little tussle going there before Daisy Chain just said, let me finish the job. Daisy Chain <laughs> uh, put green out of his misery, put yellow out of his misery pretty quickly, and then I think the most interesting thing about this Papa game, because I've seen a lot of Force Nothing games and a lot of Diplo and whatnot, was the swing back and forth that Gray and Red experienced. It must have been so annoying. Like, <laughs> right when Tomatrix and, and Jump Rope Jeremy were having a good time and pushing Teal, and yeah. Teal was down to 100 pop, Daisy Chain swooped in. So then they had to go deal with that so they wouldn't die. And then, as that happened, Mansion recovered and swooped in, and it must have been such a helpless feeling. Um, and Mansion didn't really need to have any friends, any trade, which is astounding because I thought that that would be what would win the game. I think it would have if Elbanovic wouldn't have had the massive brain fart he did and tossed his king away. Um, but again, that has happened frequently in community games. Any guesses on gold count for Daisy Chain? Remember, this is a player who did not trade even once. Any guesses? Now, it would show your gold gained from selling. I think it's going to be over 20,000. I think it's going to be... Um, 
22,812. Wow, it was very close. Like I said, multiply my number by two, and that's about where you're going to be for Daisy Chain's gold count at 46,500. And then um, Elbanovic had 43,000 gold from trade. Sensitive Boy had 20,000 trade profit. Jump Rope Jeremy had 4,000 trade profit. I don't even know if you can consider this profit. Like, if you if you have 40,000 total gold and you only traded for 1,000, I don't think Tomatrix is, qualifies as profit. But, you know, he was getting there. <laughs> he was getting there. Well, to be honest, they didn't have the time, right? They really didn't have the time, and, and the players who did have that trade profit had a bit more time there. Uh, timeline for you. There was a point where I thought Daisy Chain was going to win that game. There was a point where I thought that uh, Elbanovic and or Sensitive Boy was going to win that game. There were not many points where I thought Mansion was going to win that game until the, the tail end there, like maybe the half hour. Mansion played well, but also really benefited from the, the work of others or the mistakes of others, which is how it goes sometimes. Daisy Chain still benefited from the goth spam and had the most kills in that game, 2100. Uh, 1,700 for Tomatrix isn't bad. 1,200 for Sensitive Boy, not bad. Mansion also not too bad. Um, largest army, 160, 146, 142, 121. And then in Flatulencer with 8. <clears throat> Sorry, buddy. Okay. <laughs> if you enjoyed this game on YouTube. <laughs> um, well, thank you for watching. I uh, This is the first time I've uploaded force nothing in eight or nine months i really do want to get back to like once a month maybe getting into a new nothing map when we do community games on fridays uh now some days i take off on fridays because of other things but you know the the normal plan is to start around 12 p.m eastern and do community games on fridays and i'm going to try and stick to that but uh, stop by if you're on youtube and you want to Join in and, and toss your king away to a bunch of two-handed swordsmen. Um, or if you just want to watch, you know, you should know the drill. Uh, McLaggen in chat says, remember to like the video. You don't have to like the video if you don't want to. That's actually fine. Um, you, you can dislike it too, uh, but I might cry about it. So the option's yours, but it might be upsetting. 